Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of The Workspace, a space where we will be talking about business and culture, interviewing people in different niches with different products, backgrounds and channels. My name is Alejandra, and today we'll talk about how to start blogging and why blogging is trending again. But before we start, I would like to ask for your support and click on the follow or the subscribe button. I would really appreciate that. I started on Blogger which still exists and is part of Google and was the best start back then as Google itself was trying to launch their new ventures with their company. And the views to any blogger blog was definitely a push in front for views while surfing the web. And yes, we use that phrase, surfing the web. Back then, I had to research a lot try even more and learn a bit more about HTML, about coding, because I wanted to have a different theme on my website. And there wasn't many appies or tools that we could use back then. But if you are interested in blogging and don't know where to start, well, definitely you're not alone. I have helped many people start their blogs and today I will share a couple of basic tips. This won't be the only episode about blogging. So I'm going to start with the basics, which is who are you? Why do you want to start blogging? And what's your goal? Why blogging is trending? Because people decided to read more and decided to create a brand for themselves. That is why we have another boost on blogging. But let's start, shall we? One of the first questions that you must have thought is why you should try to blog. First, you had a wonderful idea, which is entering the blogging world. It's creating a platform to share your ideas, expertise, to share your voice with the world. There are many compelling reasons why writing a blog can be an excellent decision for you and your brand. You share your insights and experience and your readers will come to you as a go-to source of information and insight. Writing a blog can be a great way to challenge yourself creatively and explore new topics and formats. Also, starting a blog is building your personal brand and a way of promoting your business. The reality is that there are many reasons why you should do it. Next, it's how to choose what to write about. When starting a blog, it can be overwhelming to decide on a topic to write about. You may have many ideas or absolutely none at all, but don't worry. First, think about your interests and passions and what topics do you enjoy to learn or discuss with others. It's easier to write about something you're interested in because it will show in your writing. But if you already know your audience or you follow trends online, and they are an expert and inspiration, then start creating. One of the things that people ask me is how often they should write. The answer to that question depends on a variety of factors, including your goals for your blog, your schedule, and your ability to create quality content. Just like in life, always think quality versus quantity. The first thing to consider is how much time do you have to devote to writing? If you're running a blog as a side project, then it might not be possible for you to write every day. However, if you're trying to build your blog into a full-time business, then you might need to write every day or even write several times a day. Either way, always remember that inspiration can happen at any time and you can always schedule content. Something that normally is not very much share is how long should each post be? When it comes to a blog post length, there isn't a formula, there isn't magic, but there are parameters. The recommended normal blog post should be at least 300 words, no less. However, don't feel like you need to stick to a specific word count for every post. Some topics may require more in-depth research, while others may be shorter and up to the point. My biggest tip for you when writing a blog post is to write with a minimum 
of 500 words. Why? Because Google tends to favor longer form content. And if it sees longer posts, it will give you your blog post and your content more value and more authority, making your posts visible and attracting more readers. If you are looking to boost your search engine rankings, you may want to consider writing longer posts. But as long as your content is high quality and provides value to your audience, the length of your post shouldn't be a major concern. Another special topic that people tend to ask is what kind of voice you should use. When it comes to writing a blog, your tone and voice can be just as important as the content itself. This will change the tone of the topic and your goal. The way you present yourself can impact how readers perceive you. So it's important to find a tone that resonates with your audience while still being true to yourself. Personally and professionally, I recommend using a professional tone in the third person, preferably. If you are creating a brand or you have a business like myself, writing about business and design, I use a professional tone always in a very much stylish way in the third person. But you always need to consider the purpose of your blog. If you're trying to educate or entertain or trying to create a sense of community or sharing personal experiences, this will help to guide you and your tone and voice throughout your blog. Remember to always try to find the balance between being personally and professionally. You can share your personal experiences, but always maintaining a level of professionalism. Avoid using slang or language that could be perceived as offensive or inappropriate. And if you're actually gearing your blog towards professionals, you may want to use more technical languages and a more formal tone. During these years, images and credits changed online. So what about images on your blog? Images can add a visual interest and help break up blocks of text on your blog. However, it is important to use images in a way that enhances your content. Professionally and personally, I prefer to read content with a single image as a thumbnail, and this needs to be relevant to the main topic of the blog post. Use high quality images. Poor quality images can make your blog look super unprofessional. There are many websites such as Unsplash or Pixabay that give you high resolution images for free. Any search engine will pick up the image caption and your alt data and redirect what the person search online to your blog post. It's another great way to gain more views and get more readers. My final basic tip for images is one that I follow religiously for anything created online and offline is give credit when credit is due. Remember that if you see a post of yours online shared by anyone, you would also like to see them crediting you. So why not do it for the images itself? And for the last part of this episode is about a simple free way on promoting your blog posts. We will have an episode just for promotion, but this one is actually one that you know. Once you hit publish on your latest blog post, it's time to start promoting it. While it's important to focus on writing great content, it's equally important to make sure people are reading it. And the best way is to share on, you guessed it, social media. It's easy, it's free, and the most effective way to promote your blog post and create an audience. This is, of course, including Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Make sure you write a catchy headline and description and try to use the same image that you use on your blog post so people can understand that it comes from that post. And this is it, guys. This was another episode from The Workspace, a place where we will share many tips about business, marketing, and culture. Before you go, if you haven't done already, I would love for you to click the follow or the subscribe button. In our next episode, we will have an interview with Congressman Adam Smith and his new book, Lost and Broken. So stay tuned, guys, and see you on the next episode.